maybe just one last question. Um, we're going to have Marion Nessel in and talk to her soon about kind of food political issues, uh, industry issues, and how the industry is supported, has supported a lot of studies in academia and at the governmental level. Um, what do you say to somebody who worries that food scientists and nutrition scientists are too close to the industry, too, you know, influenced in their studies, in their conferences, in some of the other things they do by the fact that the industry incentivizes certain kinds of results and pays for some of your conferences and your travel and funds your studies and your grad students. Is that a worry? Are you compromised? I'm ab absolutely, totally compromised. I mean, I took early in my career, I yeah. took a little bit of money from Monsanto to study potassium sorbate. And I was given a very obvious introduction to corporate financing of research. Mm -hmm. They said, do the work, publish it, whatever the results. Monsanto said that. That was the Monsanto group that I was working with. Okay. Um, government contracts are just as compromised. You're working on what the government determines is the priority. Uh, the worst case of not being able to do the science came on a government contract in the fish area. Um, it was a, a contract, not a, a research grant, to do work. And halfway through, I realized that the work was meaningless because the way it was structured, it just wasn't going to give the answer. And the government said, finish the work and publish it. We want it published regardless. And it was, it was nonsense. Um, so, it, very frustrating experience. Um, our government is not supporting research, and the assumption that my views are totally colored by that one time I took money from Monsanto 30 years ago is not giving me any intellectual credit. I mean, we are all compromised. We all have conflicts of interest. We all have values that we bring to the table. And those are going to affect what we do. If you're an epidemiologist, uh, every, everything is caused by that kind of a crisis. If you're working on drug research, you are either got to save people or you've got to prove that what the other guy is doing is killing people because you want to generate a reason the government thinks this is a priority. We're all marketing. Everybody in academia, particularly if you're going for grants, is selling themselves. And they're going to compromise themselves to take their view to get the person who's going to put up the money. So and maybe it's only we philosophers who are uncompromised. If you are a poor <laughs> philosopher, fine. If you are not a poor philosopher, you probably also have been compromised. You have goals. Yes. And those are personal values that influence how you do it. I mean, if we were so good at this, we wouldn't have this political spectrum because we'd all agree on what was the truth. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is based on our values and priorities and things that affect us that color who we are and, and therefore make us not totally unbiased. And that's one of the challenges in science. But again, you have to look at science as a process. Yeah. And science, scientists are biased, bigoted, conflict of interest, you name it. But the whole idea of science is, is a process of repeating the experiments, of taking different pieces of the experiments and seeing if it all makes sense. And over time, it's a relatively good self-correcting system. So again, we don't create laws of science on the first publication. Right. And so Unless there's Newton. a... Newton. Newton well, might have. Newton might have. <laughs> I'll, I'll give him uh, the opportunity if he chooses. Yeah. But again, these things are checked and cross-checked. And there are scientists who work for one industry and another scientist works for another industry. They're incentivized to challenge each other's work. Again, it isn't like the industry is one big monolith that, you know, that corporations making processed products and the companies selling organic milk have the same interest. And even within the large corporations today, their organic branch or their natural branch is often in conflict. Ben and Jerry's, one of the great Vermont right. icons, is part of Unilever. But Unilever has allowed them to do things that are totally at odds with the corporate culture. So when you look and say, well, 
you've taken money from companies. If you take your entire career and take money from one company, I suspect you legitimately could be called a shill for the company. Okay. But we get it from trade associations, we get it from the government, we get it from the companies. And if you become too lopsided, you become tainted. And some people are. Yeah. And some of the worst scientists are the ones who try to claim to have no conflict of interest because they often will use these kinds of issues to taint everybody else. So the upshot here is that everyone's taking funding from different sources, but for the most part, the results aren't predetermined. It may be that the topics or the sort of areas that the grants are targeted on are influenced by industry directives or the kinds of things they're willing to fund. But you don't get the sense that people are told, you know, here's what your results need to turn out to be or else you're never going to get another grant. Is it possible that that's happened? Probably has an occasion. I mean, the, the conflict of, of data between what tend to be industry driven versus some kinds of the more extreme NGO types of things. But it, again, if you look at both sets of data, they're probably even compromised methodologically. One of the problems I've come to wonder about is do we just have too many scientists and are we not training our scientists in critical thinking skills? Um, and I see that across the board, is that we have so much science and so much money in science that there's a lot of sloppy science. And it's easier when you're doing sloppy science to kind of do it in a way that you might predict might give a result your sponsor is happier. And, and I suspect at a subconscious level, one does want to please one's donor so they'll give you more money. Right. And so, yes, it has influence, but I would say it probably has a lot less influence than these same corporations and the same NGOs putting money into the lobbying in Washington.